Alhamdulillahirrabbilalamin wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam ima ba'd Continuing on our treaties in uh, Nawakid al-Islam The nullifiers of the Islamic faith Qala Shaykh Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab rahimahullah ta'ala We reached the uh, uh, seventh naqid min Nawakid al-Islam Qala Shaykh al-sabi'u Al-sihru wa minhu wa sarf ومنه ومنه الصرف وعطف فمن فعله أو راضي به كفر ودليل قوله تعالى وما يعلمان من أحد حتى يقولا إنما نحن فتنة فلا تكفر. so the sheikh said رحمه الله تعالى he said the seventh ناقد من نواقد الإسلام he said sorcery and some of its types are using magic to cause discord between a man and his wife, and another type is using potions or magic to entice someone to have affection for someone. Therefore, whoever engages in sorcery or is pleased with using magic has disbelieved. The evidence for this is a statement of Allah, and they did not teach anyone except they said, we are only a trial, so do not disbelieve. And this is in Surah Al-Baqarah, verse 102. This is incredibly important to know the importance of staying away from any and all forms of sorcery, magic, uh, horoscopes. Uh, all of these things are prohibited. And some of the other things, uh, like uh, some people like to go to palm readers and crystal ball readers and things like this, all of this is Muharram and all of this is a uh, means if not directly disbelief so you must stay away from this in any of those people who claim to know the unseen people who use Ouija boards and all of those other things and they call the dead or they call the jinn this is incredibly dangerous practice you should never you should free yourself from having any relations with those otherworldly beings in fact only it, Practice what Islam has practiced you of seeking refuge in Allah from the evil of those beings. For example, when entering the the bathroom, a'udhu billah, bismillah, a'udhu billah, min al khubdi wa khabaith. Seeking refuge in Allah before you enter the restroom by saying, I seek refuge in Allah from the male and female devils and so, and so forth. Because you do not know what you're tampering with when you mess with these otherworldly beings. And so by calling upon the jinn, by calling upon the spirit world, by messing and, and, and interacting with devils, you're on a very dangerous course to kufr, wazandaka, and her heresy, and entertaining an evil that you cannot even fathom, nor can you deal with. Sorcery is a comprehensive term which refers to incantations, potions, smoke, and other things which have an effect upon the heart, body, and cause sickness, death, and separation between spouses. So this is one of the definitions, and there's, this was a definition taken uh, by Sheikh uh, Abdulaziz uh, uh, Raji. The reason these practices are considered sorcery is because they cause a definite effect from unapparent causes, things which appear unrelated to the cause, meaning. So, for example, a person does such and such with the, with the you know, they mix some herbs together and then they take it to someone or whatever in order to cause someone to love them. Now, we... Especially coming from the Western world, we, although we have a tradition, uh, relating to this, people call it love potions and stuff, these things can sometimes actually have an effect. And it may perhaps be because the person is, uh, is, is, is involved in witchcraft, or they are communicating with the jinn, with the spirit world. So these things can actually have an effect. And these practices are considered sorcery because they cause a definite effect from unapparent causes, from causes which we are, are not clear to us. People who use sorcery or learn it 
or teach it are considered disbelievers by majority of Islamic scholars and this is due to the fact that many sorcerers worship jinn to obtain information or seek their support to do evil like causing divorce or enchantment causing sickness and disease and this requires putting one's trust in the jinn spirits and devils instead of Allah the creator of the heavens and earth so this is a type of shirk so this is one of the ways in which that this is a type of shirk it causes a person to put tawakkul to put their reliance and their trust in devils and jinns and spirits in the crystal ball in the Ouija board in those their, their dead relatives or whatever instead of putting Putting their trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they have made this type of ibadah, this tawakkul, and this trust in the devils instead of Allah, the creator of the devils, the creator of the, the mankind and jinn, the one who created everything and everyone and created them for the purpose of worshiping him and him alone. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنُ وَالْإِنْسِ لَلَيْعَبُدُونَ I did not create mankind and jinn except for the purpose of worshiping me. So all worship goes to Allah. Your trust, your tawakkul is in Allah. You don't need to go to the to crystal, ball, uh, crystal ball readers. You don't need to go to the palm reader. Say, oh yeah, your palm is this long and your, your, your line in the middle is on this length and it looks like this and it's branching off like this. You're going to die this day. You're going to get married this day. You have riches coming to you or this and that and the other. وَعِيَاذِ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ ذَلِكَ Stay away from those people who claim to know the unseen. So sorcery is shirk. And the one who does it, he studies it or teaches it or practices it or is pleased with it has disbelieved. This is because the one who is pleased with sorcery is just like the sorcerer. And whoever is pleased with polytheism is a polytheist. This is the statement of Sheikh Abdulaziz al Raji, Hafidhullah Ta'ala. The evidence for this is a statement of Allah, and they did not teach anyone except they said, We were only a trial. So do not, do not disbelieve. And this is in Surah Al Baqarah, uh, verse 102. This refers to two angels who were sent by Allah as a trial for the people. And when they were asked to teach sorcery or magic, they would warn against it and advise the people to stay away from it. And if the people persisted in their request, they would teach them. This shows that sorcery is disbelief and that it is and that is why Allah the Almighty said, so do not disbelieve. Meaning they were sent to those people as a trial and a test. And the people who succumbed to that test, or who succumbed to that, that trial, and actually wanted to be taught sorcery and engage in magic and deal with the jinn, those people failed the test. And those people fell into disbelief. As Allah said, so do not disbelieve. So Allah gave it the wasf, He gave it the description of disbelief. Meaning the people who practice sorcery, that they fell into disbelief. Sorcery is used for different purposes, to cause friction and marital discord between the husband and the wife, and also it is used to cause people to have affection towards one another, when in normal circumstances they would not be attracted to one another. A person may be given a love potion in order to attract a potential partner, who normally might find them unattractive, but due to sorcery they succumb to the person's desires. This all entails disbelief belief and is strictly prohibited in Islam. Also, people who are very charismatic in their speech and use their charisma to deceive others or spread false beliefs and doctrine are referred to as sorcerers, as a type of sorcery. Uh, a final note pertaining to sorcery is that everyone or that everything is by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's decree and a sorcerer cannot affect or cause harm unless Allah decreed it to happen. This does not mean it is pleasing to Allah, but rather out of his infinite wisdom, he decreed it to be and all might and power belongs to Allah, the Almighty. And this is a very important point. And as some people are affected by the Ayn, they're affected by... Uh, people's hasid and so forth, which causes them to get sick, which causes them to have weakness and so forth. This is a part of Allah's creed, even though that evil eye was from the people. Uh, and the only reason that it had an effect was because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed for it to have effect. And so it is important for us to, to make istadad for these kind of things, to prepare ourselves for these kind and to protect ourselves by doing what? By making a lot of dhikr, by making a lot of remembrance of Allah subhanahu 
subhanahu wa ta'ala by a lot of prayer, extra prayer, extra fasting, extra reading of the Quran, making our adhkar at night, those things, uh, saying the three quls at night before you sleep, and you know, like this, the ruqya and, and putting it on and rubbing it on your body uh, before you, you sleep. That's incredibly important to do that. And that's a reminder for myself because all of us get lazy. We get lazy, we get tired, we're laying in the bed and then we say, ah, a little bit later then you're too tired to even do that. And this laziness we have to overcome because it's a type of protection. It is a protection, how? Because you are seeking refuge in Allah from the evil of His creation. Also saying the du'as before you enter the restroom, as we mentioned, or the du'a before you uh, enter the house. I seek refuge in Allah from the evil of what He has created. So this is incredibly important for us as believers to protect ourselves at all costs and under all circumstances from sorcery and magicians and stay away from people who are doing magic uh, even if it seems simple simple magic uh, uh, simple uh, acts of sorcery or, 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 or trickery or whatever you want to call it and stay far away from those things like horoscopes and believing in those things and people who read, try to read the stars and palm readers and people who gaze into the crystal balls and seances and all these other kind of evils. Stay away from them because, and you would not believe how much the entertainment business and other uh, aspects of uh, many of our daily lives are entrenched in this kind of evil, that they use the other world and spirits for their success. And there are many exposés of certain individuals. For example, uh, you can go and find out information. For example, a very famous entertainer is Beyonce. She's very loved, beloved by many of the people. And she will tell you that her stage name is um, Sasha Fierce or something like this. And that she, she uses this this persona, which in fact is a type of jinn. She's done amazing dances as they, they relate about her and amazing tricks. And this is what is the Anabi jinn. This is seeking refuge in the jinn, using that for your success. And they mention that in order to get into that business and to be famous when it comes to there's a line you cross in order to maintain that fame and to get at the top is that you have to relate with the jinn. You have to do the most evil of things, uh, propagate homosexuality, ta'awin with the jinn, work and cooperate with the jinn. And we see this with many of the so-called famous entertainers, people like Madonna, people like uh, uh, Minaj, Nicki Minaj and the other ones, and all of this. So stay away even from this entertainment world. It's incredibly dangerous and it's, an incre it's a very serious wasila to disbelief and you don't want to find yourself outside of the fold of Islam after having been a believer in Allah and his messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam but because you fell into following the entertainers and following what was trendy at the time well everyone seems to be into jinn everyone seems to be into sorcery it's, oh, it's something light billah. stay away from this and propagate this to your brothers and sisters that are that do not have Islamic knowledge and are not grounded in their faith because they take it lightly they don't even know that it's disbelief so warn them admonish them advise them and invite them to good and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala Muhammad.